<clears throat> Welcome everybody. It's Monday, July the 11th, 2022. Could be uh, July the 12th where you are, like for Rena. Welcome Rena. And uh, this is the Open Hearted Practice Group. I'm Jim Mansky and my life partner. I'm Jerry Mansky. <laughs> that's my life, our li my life partner and training partner. And we've been doing this group um, in one form or another for almost 20 years. And uh, it's really, I feel happy to be here with you today. Although I can feel the gravitational pull to the uh, great outdoors. Right outside my window is uh, the Maui rainforest where we live. And I can feel the pull to go outside and walk around in the sun. But I'm going to be patient and uh, wait till the end of our call because I want to hang out with you guys today. And um, I'm eager to explore um, the second part of a little series that we started last week when we celebrated Interdependence Day. Today we'll look at the flip side of the coin around um, autonomy and freedom. How are you, Jory? Oh, I'm a little sleepy, but happy to be here. I've just been kind of hanging out and having a lazy day, which is so sweet. And I'm glad to be here. And I'm glad you're here. And when I say you, I mean all of you. Uh, I'm glad to hang out with you and see where we go, see what we learn. I, I, have, a, I have a lot of learning at every single class we do. Uh, it's, and for me, it's a continual process. I think that's true for all of us. It's just a continuous process of learning. So thanks for the partnership. Thanks for being here. Yeah, it is an opportunity for learning and practice. We, we call it a practice group. There's lots of different kinds of NBC groups, I suppose. And um, this one's a practice group, which means that we put the emphasis on practice, giving you the opportunity to um, utilize the skills that you have and that you're developing. And we do it three different ways <clears throat> in general. Uh, one way is with self-connection, where you're using NBC as an inside job. <clears throat> Secondly, um, honesty, where you get a chance to, to speak your honesty. And there's a couple different ways we do that. One in the large group here and also utilizing small groups. And then the third way to practice NBC is the listening part, which we call empathy. So we kind of weave all three of those um, learning styles or methods uh, into our group each week. And this week, uh, Jory is going to start with um, a self-connection exercise in just a moment. And I'll be doing the, I'll be uh, making the small groups uh, for the check-in round. If you don't want to be in a small group, um, then you can just put an equal sign in front of your name. And that just tells me not to put you into a small, uh, not to put you into a small group. We'll put you into a, uh, a group where no one's expecting anybody to say or do anything, kind of like the library. So uh, if you don't want to do that, just put if you if you um, you don't need to do anything unless um, you don't want to be in a small group. And uh, so I'll take care of that for you, Tommy and Heidi, since you may not know how to do that. And I can't really um, get feedback from you whether you do or not. So I'll make sure to remember that for you. If you're here for the first time, we want to extend a especially warm welcome to you. Uh, the call is recorded. So, and it will go on to our YouTube channel. So um, you get to choose what you want to say and what you don't want to say. And um, uh, whether you want to have your camera on or off, so forth, especially here in the large group. When you go to the small group, we recommend that you turn your camera on. It tends to enhance a sense of connection, but we really want to, especially today with today's theme, which is autonomy and freedom, we really want to honor your autonomy and freedom. And uh, I guess with that, Jory, I turn it over to you for our self-connection exercise. Oh, okay. Well, just uh, just notice if you're comfortable where you are. Just notice what it feels like just to settle yourself in a way that you're comfortable sitting or standing or just being for just about five or 10 minutes right now while we explore self-connection. Yeah. 
Notice if your body's asking for any special attention. And just take some time to just breathe in and out, just observing your breath. Just feeling what it feels like to breathe consciously. Allowing yourself to just be present to life life of air, breathing. And then notice any sensations in your body that are calling you. And just give your body permission to feel exactly the way it feels. And then think of one person that you love, someone who you really, or just care for, or just have really positive feelings toward. Maybe it's a child or a friend or a partner, or someone else. And notice your breath again and see if that's changed or it's the same as you think of this beloved person. Again, giving your breath permission to be doing just what it's doing perfectly. This is your life flow. And then turn that same care that you feel for someone you care about towards yourself. Just see if you can hold yourself with that same care and love. You matter. Feel what that feels like. Hmm. Think of one thing that you could do to make life more wonderful for yourself right here, right now, during our time together.
And breathing in and breathing out, just notice what it feels like to make that commitment to yourself. And in a few minutes, you'll have an opportunity to actually share that with some people in a breakout group if you chose that. Notice even what it feels like right now to consider sharing this. And Jim, when you're ready. Sure, we are ready. And um, we will do this small uh, group activity for about uh, 10 minutes. There'll be one minute at the end. Uh, You'll get a little notice on your screen that says the breakout rooms are closing, but you don't have to do anything. You could just hang out for that last minute and you'll automatically come back here to the main room. So you don't need to push any buttons or do anything like that. Uh, In the small group, the idea is that you introduce yourself and say uh, your response to this exercise, what you learned from it, and and, um, follow the guidance that Jory gave you. And um, um, with that, I think we'll go. And we'll see you back here in 10 minutes, 11 minutes, actually. All right, here we go. in zoom here we are back again i hope you enjoyed that opportunity to connect with some new people or maybe some people that were that you've met before groups are more or less random but uh, so you never quite know who you're going to get in the zoom lottery but i hope you enjoyed that chance to practice nvc but the honesty and the empathy skills and is there anybody that would like to say anything to the large group to help you get I just more? want to acknowledge that Siva has her own breakout group there. I see all three of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anything else from anyone else? Oh, you may not know how to raise your hand. So on the bottom of your screen, there's a little smiley face with the word uh, reactions underneath it. And uh, you can just click on that uh, smiley face and it opens up a little menu that allows you to raise your hand. So uh, we'll go to Rob first and then Vera and then uh, Joseph. Go ahead, Rob. Yeah, it was pretty simple in our little breakout group. Uh, Everybody uh, was channeling that love from uh, their son or daughter. Yeah, And, uh, and especially one member was really able to channel it towards their uh, child and then back to themselves. And uh, so that was very nice to hear. Sweet, nice to say with that. Thanks, Rob. Vera and then Joseph. Did we just lose? Yeah, oh no, there you are, Jim. Yeah, I, I seem to have woke up uh, with unease and on some trigger that bothering me. I was hesitant to join the group, wanted to be just with me and self okay, but I thought, let me just be with you all and some compassion may flow to my body. So I, I started saying that in my breakout room, one person whom I fully relate to as a mother and as a someone I very know her personally. So as I was sharing with her, um, I think I could see a shift in my body um, from a rat. I 
I don't say I'm totally settled, but it just started the plan to settle. Yeah, I'm so grateful to Sarah Joy and Diva who helped me. Yeah, thank you. For Thanks, Vera. Glad you're here. Glad you found it, uh, some sense of support. We will have another opportunity to go to small groups a little bit later in the call after another chance to practice. And uh, go ahead, uh, Joseph. Good to see you here. Thank you. So I've done the NVC Tom Bond's first course, then I did the IIT in Germany. And I, this week, today was the first class of Tom Bond's next session. Totally new because uh, what I saw last year was complete confusion and all those things. Now I'm getting slowly clarity. I've done tons of courses for the last 25 years in the sense I learned to how to listen at Toastmasters. I went for 10 years of Vipassana once a year. And still, now today is my problem. I can't remember and can't register. My job I knew when I did my job, but I was a Catholic. I knew only our father. So I was, when I went to Germany, I was in such a deep shell of under the rock. A lot of pain and trauma came out. 30% of the time when I was there, I was sobbing. So now I want to know, why can't I register something? Whatever my wife tells, somebody tells me. I went for a wedding last week. I don't register. I don't register, I don't remember because basically I'm not interested. My life was like that, maybe, but now I'm interested to learn all these things. I don't know how to register and remember. So the things I want to remember, I remember. Otherwise, it's tough. Sounds Thank really you. frustrating for you. Like uh, you have this desire to connect, to stay present and to remember things that are important to you. But unless there's a really um, a high degree of motivation, it just kind of flows through you. You don't really. Correct. Uh, Correct. Yeah. So it's life is uh, difficult. I can uh, remember and go and give a speech if I prepare. But ordinary things, because probably, probably what I'm finding now, nobody cared for me. So I said, I don't need to listen. Mm. All my life was like that. Yeah. Only people are uh, compassionate to me. I would listen to them. Otherwise, yeah. yeah that makes a lot of sense that uh, you were in the system that you were educated in, the family system or the school system, when you didn't sense that there was compassion for you, you checked out. Makes sense to me. I bet that other people here have had a similar experience that uh, when we don't think that our needs matter, we disappear. Yeah. 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 And sounds like now you're, you're willing to like start looking at that and seeing if you can grow some new skills. So you're involved. I'm in 75, 75. And I am so passionate. I, you know, I put so many, at least three, four hours every day doing NVC because it has given me such a joy. Yeah, that's so exciting that you found something that you really connect with. Well, I'm, I'm glad yeah. you found us. I'm really glad you found us. I hope, I hope you enjoy your time with us today. Uh, I, I, if you're in Thank Germany, you. it's like four o'clock in the morning. So I really admire your... your... No, I, I'm in, sorry, I'm in New York. Okay. I went to, I did my IIT in Germany, Bremen, about a month ago. Oh, I see. Okay, great. Well, I still admire you because it's ten o'clock at night where you are. So you're doing way yeah. better than at ten o'clock at night. I am. I'm already horizontal. I'm just like this. 
So thank you. Thanks for staying awake for us. I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And Patricia. Patricia. It'd be nice to see your face if you would, Patricia, when you talk, but you don't have to. There you are. Oh, when I talk on the big group, I like to put my face on. Uh -huh. I just put it off because it's being recorded. That's the only reason that I have it off. I see. Um, I'm really not sure why I even raised my hand. I think um, after this small group, we had a very, very intimate small group. And um, after the small group, I thought, oh, you know, uh, a lot of my um, life energy has always been to, to, for myself to be a soft place for people to land. And um, after the small group, I realized that now I'm at a point in my life where I have to learn how to land softly. Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 it's sweet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sweet as you evolve into the various stages of our life. And now there's something new happening for you. Yeah. Land mm -hmm. softly. <laughs> Land softly. Sweet. Yeah. Like a Thank cat, like a cat, just sort of landing <laughs> on your, on your feet. Yeah. I love that. Sweet. Yeah, Sweet. I'm glad you're landing here today. That's really <laughs> okay. OK. Yeah, someone put a note in the chat that there is um, closed captioning is available. Uh, you can that's on the bottom of your screen as well, where it says for me, it says live transcript for you. It might say closed captioning or has the letter CC. But that'll open up a little um, window, just like when you're watching a TV show. And it does a pretty good job of catching uh, catching our words. I'm amazed that it can do that. And um, Tanya, it's so great to see you here. I haven't seen you for a while. I'm really happy to see you. Where is Tanya? Thank you, Jim, and thank you, Jory, for your for your meditation. It's such a joyful meditation. To to remind us to love ourselves like we love our precious friends. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome home, sweetie. Oh, thank I know you. you've been through a, quite a medical ride. So glad yeah. you're back. And Sorry. yeah, so the answer, unanswered question, I guess, is I've been going through a period after I came out of the hospital, I just went through a period where by this time of night, I am so exhausted. I just but today I had energy, so I really wanted to be with you guys. Well, I'm so glad. Thanks. I'm really glad you're here. <laughs> okay. Wow. Unless there's anything else, and we'll dive in to um, our our topic and get a chance to practice here again in a few minutes. So I'll just check in, see if there's anybody who just needed a little extra time before we decided to say something to the large group. I want to make space for you too. And there will be another chance later as well. So great. I'm going to share my screen with you. Today we're um, going, to, going to touch on autonomy and freedom. And um, the, we're doing a little series called Transcending Dependence and Independence. Uh, I didn't know it was going to be a series, <clears throat> but it just kind of evolved that way after our class last week. Uh, where we really focus on interdependence and really enjoyed uh, being with you and uh, exploring interdependence and realizing that if we just left it there, you might end up with the impression that all you have to do is be interdependent, just empathize with what's going on and uh, just kind of ride the wave of whatever's happening in life, and then everything will be okay. And um, we want to, we, we want you to have more power than that. I do anyway. I want you to have more power than that. I want you to have the power to um, to make a big difference in your life, and to make a difference in your world. To find the freedom to contribute to make life wonderful for yourself and other people. 
And so that's what we're going to explore a little bit today. And it does start with this notion of interdependence. If you imagine that each, each circle on the screen is um, a person, we are all uh, interdependently related. What I do affects the people in my family. Uh, in a way, this, this is a representation of the, the, the house that I live in, because <clears throat> there's three circles. There's Jim, Jory, and Jaya. We all live together. And what uh, Jaya does affects me what I, and Jory. What Jory does affects Jaya and me, and, um, and vice versa. All, we're all in, in, interacting. And even if we're just in our own space, we share water, we share electricity, we share um, internet. And so when we, when we choose something, it matters to everybody else. We also have a cat, we have neighbors next door, and just spreading out. Uh, bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, you know, we end up um, acknowledging that we live in an interdependent world, which is what we uh, really had a direct experience of last week that everything that um, that we touch has been touched by other human beings. And we we benefit from the contributions of, of all of us. Um, Tori, if you could find that quote that you sent uh, off to um, Hannah, I'd love to include that at some point today, the quote from Marshall. <clears throat> so let's practice uh, right off the bat with some self-empathy. <clears throat> self-empathy is uh, a little bit different than self-connection. I mean, in a way, it's the same thing. But uh, the focus with self-empathy is to uh, be present with yourself and with what's really important to you. What's, a, as Marshall would call it, Marshall Rosenberg, the founder of nonviolent communication, uh, what's alive in you? What's the, what's the energy that's moving in you? So self-empathy is an intentional focus on being with that, uh, whatever's going on in you. And so <clears throat> think of a situation in your life where a mud, another person that you're in an ongoing relationship where that doesn't have to be like a romantic person, it could be a neighbor, a kid, a parent, um, uh, somebody at work. But um, <clears throat> think of a situation where they behaved in a way that you did not enjoy. Now, pick something relatively mild. If you can imagine a scale of zero to six, pick something in the range of uh, maybe one, two, or three, depending on your skill level. And that's just to support you in your practice so that you can stay uh, more present and actually start uh, building the, the neural uh, connections that make NBC uh, a little bit easier to use when you need it the most. So pick something relatively mild to support your presence and focus. And then describe um, and it's great if you can write this down. Of course, you don't have to write it down, <clears throat> but for practice, it's really helpful to write down what happened, especially to, des to describe what you saw or heard. Describe what you saw or heard. So I'll let you think about it for a minute, then I'll give you an example, just in case you need some inspiration. So just in case you're having trouble, I'll, I'll, um, I'm going to play the role of my mentor who lives uh, about uh, 15 minutes away. She's also an NBC trainer, but someone uh, moved into her neighborhood recently in the last week or so. And um, this particular person um, at seven o'clock or so in the morning, 730 in the morning, they start playing music on their stereo. And they play it loud enough so that everybody in the neighborhood can hear it. And the music pretty much goes more or less um, all day until about 10 o'clock at night. So that's how this other person is behaving. Um, someone plays music starting in the morning and going until um, 9 o'clock at night.
So notice in my in my description, uh, I just gave the bare bones facts. Somebody plays music uh, between I, I made up from seven. I, it doesn't happen to me, so I'm kind of empathizing with what's going on for my friend. But from seven in the morning until ten o'clock at night, just the facts, as if I was describing it to um, uh, to a court or to a scientist. Just the observation, what I see here. Um, maybe what I smell, taste, or touch. In this case, it's just what I what I hear. I don't actually see anything. There's no evaluation in it. There's no judgment. There's no opinion yet. That comes later. Let's just pause for a second to see if anybody needs any help with this step. Anybody needs any support, you can just raise your hand. Going once, going twice. Okay, great. <clears throat> so the second step or part of the process is to tune into your body right now. Right now, how do you feel about it? Not when it happened, but how do you feel about it right now? If you don't know how you feel, you might just say, I don't know what I feel, then you can just describe any physical sensations that you notice in your body. So maybe you notice that your teeth are clenched or you have butterflies in your stomach or there's a tingling or you feel numb. All that counts. You might notice tears. So now you're just describing sensations in your body of course, you can't describe them unless you let yourself feel them. So you open yourself to be able to notice these sensations. So first you notice, then you name it. Maybe the name includes an emotion, something like anger or fear or anxious, hurt, frustrated, disappointment. So first you notice it, then you name it, and then you just allow it. Just let yourself feel it because it's this feeling that you're having is like a gateway. It's a gateway to help you to determine what's important to you. So what's important to you about this particular situation? In my case, I'm, I'm feeling um, frustrated and annoyed and some curiosity. And what's important to me is uh, peace, peace and quiet. So for those of you who are still developing your needs vocabulary, this might help. You don't have to choose a word that's on this list, but if it's helpful, you can use this. What's important to you about this situation?
Again, if you need help with either <clears throat> connecting to your feelings or your needs, just raise your hand and Jory or I can offer you some support. So noticing what's important to you is one part. Naming it is another part. If you don't have a name for it, you can make up a name. That's okay. And then allowing yourself to have this need. This seems like the critical thing. This seems like so important to let yourself as a human being to have these needs. One way that helps me to allow myself to have needs is to experience them as if they're like an energy, an energy that's flowing through me. Each need like has a different frequency or a, a different intensity. And it comes and goes and changes, but I, I can just sort of attune myself to this energy. So I can sense in my body, like as I just stay with this experience of, I've been with neighbors just like, like that before, not quite to the extent that I hear my friends going through, but I'm just really having a sense of a need for mutuality, a need for cooperation. This just kind of, kind of shows up as a yearning. I, I almost feel tears in my eyes. I really want to live in a world where we care for one another. So someone asked me to put the other questions up for just a moment, so I'll do that. And if you have a question uh, about what we've done so far, this would be a good time to just pause and ask. For those of you who are brand new to nonviolent communication, let me just share the nicknames for these various parts that we've just been playing with. When I asked you to uh, describe what you saw or heard, that's what Marshall Rosenberg called an observation. And then when I asked you to notice how you feel about it, Marshall called that a feeling. And then thirdly, what's important to you? That's what Marshall called a need. It's not so important that you know that, but sometimes having that, that hook, the kind of framework can support you in your practice. So now what do you wanna do about it? So the first three questions are a way of discovering how you are with a particular situation. We always ask each other that when we meet each other, how are you? And this is a way that you can actually honestly and authentically answer the question. And then the second part of nonviolent communication is what, what do you want to do about it? What would you like to do to um, um, make life more wonderful? As Jory pointed out during the self-connection exercise. So think about that for a minute and see if, if some ideas come up for you. What would you like to do about it? And Jim, I have no idea what you're talking about, about a quote. I gave Jiva, I put a quote that I gave Jiva, but it's not from Marshall. Okay, I got it, thanks. Okay. Thank you.
So sometimes it takes a while to come up with a request. And our tendency in our culture is to go to action, you know, to actually um, <clears throat> ask somebody to do something. And that can be an important step sometimes, but often in nonviolent communication, we slow things down a little bit. And we imagine um, a small step request, which might be um, one thing that if I'm in this situation, <clears throat> probably what I would do is I'd, I'd reach out to a friend. I'd maybe connect with Jory about it, or I'd connect with uh, Jaya or uh, one of my empathy buddies and just get more empathy, get more of a sense of self connection. So that's always a step that you can take before you move into action. Is, a, is to make a request of yourself to reach out and get some support. Maybe you want, maybe in, in my case, a, a question might arise, I might get online and see if I can find out if there's some kind of county ordinance uh, that I can get some clarity about, about what the rules are. Maybe that might be helpful. I don't know if it'd be helpful or not, but that's just one idea that popped up. So when you're connecting to possibilities, for me, it's important not to uh, just to be open to all kinds of possibilities. I don't know that I'm what I'm going to choose yet. But just to open to possibility that something might make life more wonderful. One thing that happened in that neighborhood that I was really touched by was two of the neighbors got together and they made a lay and they got a basket full of food and they went to the person's house. They weren't home at the time uh, and they left the food in the lay there as a welcome to the neighborhood just to open the possibility of connection. So I pause there again to see if there's any reactions or responses to where we are so far. Okay, so now you've laid the groundwork for doing the heavy lifting. Now you're connected to your own feelings and needs. Oh, go ahead, Rena. Great. Go ahead. Um, Jim, I'm reminded of uh, Viktor Frankl's, um, you know, uh, wisdom that in that pause between stimulus and response, there's the choice that all of us have. And I loved what you said actually happened, you know, that people welcome the person and connected with them before correcting. Mm -hmm. And um, I wouldn't even call that correcting then, you know, once the connection is there, then there's a dialogue. So yeah. I love that uh, story and uh, it gives me a lot of hope. Yeah. In, uh, in, in, in creating a sense of belonging, you know, because when we move into a new place, I mean, I moved into this mountain home and I was so scared in the beginning. So, you know, maybe music helps me to, to be comfortable and safe, Yeah. you know? And uh, yeah, so I, I love that. Thank you so much for the story. Thank you, Rena. Yeah, I was quite inspired by this, uh, this request that arose for, um, and you've been in this neighborhood, Rena, so you can imagine, Rena's visited us here yeah. once, and it's a very rural place. And so you can imagine mm -hmm. being, um, being at Haleakua, where we did the retreat, and mm -hmm. having the music so loud, yeah. and it's at another house, but it's still vibrating the walls in your house, in another house. So no, it, can, a, it can be like a shock to the system, you yeah, know, because there's exactly. so much of natural sounds around, and then there's suddenly this. So I understand, and yet there is that pause that helps us to find a creative solution. Yes, exactly. and and mainly to connect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's a different path. I I wish I could uh, I wish I could um, say that that's what I would do. I think I don't think that I'm quite at that level yet. To, to be honest, even though I'm an NVC trainer, I would um, I don't know that I, I'd probably just do a lot more uh, jackling, uh, complaining, uh, and so forth. Uh, before I got to the point where where um, my friends got to. So now we go to the heavy lifting. 
uh, we're going to uh, make some empathic guesses about what might be going on in the other person's other person. So Rena just kind of gave us a hint in my case, but now the, the invitation is for you to imagine what was going on for the other person before they did what they did that had a, an effect on you. So what do you imagine the other person saw or heard before they did what they did? So this is an imagination, of course, unless you're actually having the conversation and can confirm your imagination, but it's okay to use your imagination in this way. But see if you can apply the same um, skill and focus only on what the other person saw or heard before they did what they did. Go ahead, Joseph, you have a question? You're still muted, I can't hear you yet. I was thinking that he may think you may be enjoying the music. That's possible, that might be, he might have that thought. That's a good guess. Sarah, Sarah Joy? Well, I wasn't quite clear on how loud the music was or whether the person sounded stressed out to you or whatever because that's more of you know less of an observation and more of a, a story yeah. or whatever but I you know I was thinking maybe the person um, was told we're moving here to this rural place um, even though we lived in the city and you had a lot of friends there and maybe the person who's playing the piano did not want to move and didn't feel heard in the decision and is playing the piano loudly mm -hmm. because they want to be heard. Because they want to be heard, yeah. So, um, yeah, so um, <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Um, Joseph's guess uh, uh, was more about what the person might be feeling, which is cool. And Sarah Joy's guess is more about what they might be needing. That's also cool. But see if you can, in your own case, not necessarily in my case, and I see your hand, Ellen. See if you can guess what the other person saw or heard before they behaved in the way that impacted you. So now you're actually, this is a stretch for NBC students. You may never have even done this before, even if you've been doing NBC for a long time. I'm asking you to empathize with the other person's observation. This is not something we usually get a lot of training in, in NBC, but it can be profoundly connecting to put yourself in the other person's body and imagine what they saw or heard. And so like Rena, in Rena's case, Rena empathized with maybe this person sees an empty house and sees a neighborhood where they don't know anybody and where they don't have, they, they see, uh, they just see um, nothing. They don't really see anything. They're kind of blind to, uh, to what's actually out there. That's a certain, certainly a possibility. Uh, Ellen? Oh, Ellen's gone. Okay, maybe you change your mind. So think about in your case with the, the impact that you had on you. There's Ellen back. Go ahead, Ellen. I was just thinking that for some people, for myself, I find music grounding. So if they were in a neighborhood of unknown people, I use it for company sometimes when I'm lonely and or managing my emotions with music. So I, I would think that that could be related to um, some of that or. Yeah, you know. that's possible. That's possible. And um, um, again, the the. I, I love how uh, how open everyone's heart is to starting to guess the needs for this person. And yet, and I wanna guide you in your own case, 
to just think about what the other first what the other person saw or felt saw or heard first and then we'll we will keep going to how do you imagine they were feeling so now now as i think about my situation i can imagine that the person's feeling lonely they don't they they're maybe a little anxious like rena said um maybe they're maybe they're antsy somehow uh, they've got um got kind of a, a vibration going on in their body is a restlessness so see if you can empathize with what the other person involved in your situation what do you imagine they were feeling what do you think they were sensing in their body in terms of physical sensations or what emotion they were experiencing either of those two things or both of them just make a guess again this is just your imagination And then follow that feeling, follow that feeling to their need. What do you imagine was motivating them to behave in the way that they did? I'll put the needs list back up. So perhaps in my case, again, I'm just using my imagination. Maybe they're wanting a sense of safety. Or maybe it's about fun, celebration. Maybe it supports presence. Maybe it's something about their healing. Allison, you have a question? I have um, not exactly a question, a sort of a scenario I wanted to share. So that might not be the timing that we're doing. Go so ahead. I can wait till. No, go ahead. Oh, okay. Maybe it'll help others. Um, I really am enjoying your example because. I could relate to experiences I've had similar to that. And, um, and also what Rena has offered and Ellen offered. And I thought, wow, okay. So I'm pretending I'm this person that's playing this very loud music. <clears throat> and I'm thinking, what if, just as a way to soften, because my initial when I look to see how I'm holding this, um, I've enemy imaged right away. In my own way, I have, with a psychology background, I see myself doing this, have to fight this all the time, pathologizing. <laughs> this is my version of enemy imaging, pathologizing this person. They're some probably semi drug maybe using and they're this like hip hop monster and um i'm this trying to have a serene calm down life and um this is a, a nightmare to me so this is the enemy and i noticed that's even the ones trying to calm down and do nbc that's really what had been triggered in my psyche and the physiology, my physiology, I'm in total crunch. You know, I, I'm grasping, I'm clenching, I'm. Uh, <clears throat> so when I heard you say this uh, one neighbor had made a lay, some put flowers together, made a lay and a basket and a welcoming thing was like, what? Wow, how beautiful that is 
how, and I could, you know, thinking of Blue Marys because I was raised in Hawaii and I and think what, how amazing. So now I'm a little bit open with Rena and Ellen and what you were saying, other ways to even perceive the situation. And so now I go, now I'm, now I'm pretending I'm this person who's just moved in. So maybe I'm by myself and I don't really know where I am. And I'm, I'm not sure this was a good decision because I don't know anybody. And there's an awful lot of gap here and I'm not used to not having some, any way, so my way, plus I've got all this stuff I have to do. There's stuff I got to schlep, there's stuff I've got to, organize and get you know set up the whole house so i'm feeling lonely i'm feeling apprehensive and i'm feeling a certain amount of desperation that there's no you know i'm feeling cold. there's nobody to help me i'm all alone there's no help and i have to do everything myself and the only thing i can think of is let's just play the music that i like and play it loud, and that will take, give me some sense of connection with something. Um, and so I'm thinking now, from the lays and the basket of fruits and whatever, um, oh, wow, maybe somebody might actually, they might like to help me. You know, maybe there's some, it just, really opens up, oh, I'm afraid little critter here and I I don't know how to ask for help, but it could change everything. And then I might not need loud music all day long if I had someone to go pick vegetables with or something. And it just opens up the whole thing. So I really appreciate how, so I love these meetings. I love these meetings. Um, and um, thank you so much, Jim and Jerry. For you're, you're welcome, having... Allison. And, and I, as I empathize, as I empathize with the two people who put together the basket and the lay, I'm imagining what went on in their head, and what went. And I, of course, I don't know because I haven't talked to them yet. Although I want to to find out what went on in their head, because quite inspiring for me too. Is I imagine that they put themselves in the position of the new person that moved in. And they wondered, okay, if if that was me, and I found and I found out later that I was annoying my neighbors, how would I want my neighbors to approach me? Well, I want them to approach me with love, with a gift. In Hawaii, we call it aloha, with aloha. And so, okay, so what would be aloha here? Well, it'd be making a lei. It would be providing food. This is so deep in the Hawaiian tradition. And I think it's deep in the human tradition that we offer beauty and food. And that's how we how we create friends. And so I'm very touched by this story. And I think it they came up with it because they did the inner work first to get rid of the enemy image through self empathy, or maybe they gave each other empathy. Maybe they sat around for two days and just empathized with each other so that they could find the power to then approach the neighbor. I don't know. That's the world that I want to live in though. This is the big takeaway from nonviolent communication is we don't have to be stuck with the world we've been given. We can create the world that we want to choose. That's your freedom. That's your freedom. That's why we're talking about freedom today. You, I want you to all walk away from the call with the freedom to choose the world that you want to live in. We can't always control the world extrinsically, but we have choice about what we do inside ourselves and what actions we take with and what intention we have with those actions. Is that complete for you, Allison, at this point? Yes, I think one of the things is really becoming more and more wonderful um, is that I, NBC, um, 
other spiritual practices I am involved in really give me an expanded repertoire. And I've known for a long time that that's part of my problem, that when this happens, I've learned, you know, three strategies or something. I keep doing them and often they don't work. But with this, it's like, no, it, it, the reality has so many more options. And NDC is so deliciously helpful in getting even my mind to just crank open a little bit to say, wait, there are probably other things. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Because Marshall said something like, um, "All conflict is a creativity crisis, right?" And so this is a way of, of empathy and self empathy are ways of unlocking creativity. I see three other hands, and I'm going to make um, an outrageous request here that you make a note of what you want to say, uh, Rena, Patricia, and Siva. Just a, a one sentence note to yourself, because I want other people to have a chance to talk too. Everyone's been sitting here looking at the big screen, and I want to I want to offer you the opportunity to go and talk about what you've learned so far in your small group again, and to actually practice creating this world that you want to live in. And here you get a chance to practice honesty and empathy. So you'll have about Joy, did you reset the timer for uh, twenty minutes, please? Yes, and I redid the groups a little bit, so I'll yeah. open them when you're ready. So everybody has about six or seven minutes. Uh, you don't have to just strictly do seven minutes, seven minutes, seven minutes. You, you have freedom. You get to choose the world that you want to create in your small groups. And then, uh, but have a chance to hear from everybody uh, about what's alive in response to the exercise so far. Does it make sense? Is it confusing? Is it inspiring? Is it crazy? Whatever it is. And two people listen just with empathy. And then somebody else has a turn to talk and express. And then the third person. So try to make make space for everybody to have a chance to both practice listening and speaking. And we'll come back here in about twenty minutes, and then we'll do the rest of the questions and comments. We'll still have time for that. Anybody? Jim, I have a I have a sixty minute countdown. Um, sixty second. Did you want? That's fine. Sixty second. Sorry. Perfect. Yeah. So you're okay with that? Okay. That's perfect. Okay. All right. We'll All see. right. Opening up the groups, and if you're not in a group when this um, opens up means you came in before I set them all up and we'll go from there. All right, see you later. Can I post, at the end today, I can post John Kenyon's course coming up, is that right? Sure, just remind me, yeah, that's fine. How do I remind you? Uh, just send me a chat, that's good. Okay. Okay. Do you want to post it? Uh, or do you want me to? No, I'll, I'll invite. I'll... I don't have. I don't have all the information and you do so welcome back you everybody I'm glad you're here love to hear um i know there's at least there were three questions on the board so if you still have a question go ahead and raise your hand rena siva and um always oh, a memory test okay well vera has his hand up right now so hey, vera there vera Yeah, I just wanted to express that uh, this exercise has been uh, such a shifting uh, within me that uh, when, when I started this session a few minutes ago, I had uh, such a rattledness and uh, unable to uh, hold me empathically in my compassion. So when I had three pieces together, myself, the neighbor and then the other person involved, I, I could truly you know, see such a shift in me that there's more appreciation, uh, consideration, inclusivity, and uh, holding all parts together. And that, that, that agitation, rattledness, uh, rage, revenge, all that seems to be softening. And I did such a shift. Um, I wish this continues um if not even though but i have a tool to deploy uh, whenever i can and thank you so much for this um, experience jim thank and jory you're welcome i'm glad i'm glad that you had that experience Vera. thank mm -hmm. you for sharing it juliana 
So uh, I, I thank you for this exercise, Jim, because I uh, just realized that, that um, when I give myself uh, empathy, I make myself uh, feel um, uh, stronger and more capable of being loving. And when I uh, uh, give the other person empathy, uh, I'm able to, uh, to kind of, uh, you know, open my heart and understanding and love to the other person. So when I really go to uh, get the, uh, go to express my honesty, then it comes not out of, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the unhealed pain of my anger or uh, disappointment or whatever, but it comes from a place of care for the other person. That's what I experienced. A, a, a place of care for myself and care for the other person. So there's a softness in it, not an you know yeah. angry uh, kind of uh, uh, dialogue that happens. It's a tender, heart connecting uh, dialogue. Mm -hmm. uh, also, something else that uh, uh, occurred to me is um, uh, just like I want the freedom, and I, I value the freedom and the space to be myself. Can I also value the other person's need for autonomy and freedom to be themselves? And can I respect that and be aware of that? Yeah. And you know, keep that in my heart and mind. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. That's so in harmony with my experience as well. Thank you. That's yeah. the world that I want to choose. Thank you, uh, Juliana. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jody. Yeah. Uh, Patricia? What I wanted to share was um, before on the example of, of your neighbor that you gave, um, Jim, and also about the experience of, of creating, living in a world that we want, creating a world that we want to live in and being at the receiving end of that. 40 some years ago, when we purchased our home, the people we purchased it from had a party for us to introduce us to the neighborhood. And it, I have never heard of that before. I never heard of it after, but it was the most touching thing that anybody had done for an, our entire family. Because wow. All of a sudden, like everybody came and we met everybody and there was such joy and we felt so welcome in the neighborhood. So I just... Wow. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Sweet. Very Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That that's complete, that, yeah. That's and Siva? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Siva? Uh, I'm going to say what I wanted to say before, and it applies no matter what before, after, during, and that is a quote from Piaget, the Swiss psychologist, who said something like, when you discover something yourself, you feel ownership of that. Whereas if somebody teaches you that, you don't quite have that ownership. So, in a teaching situation, I think the way you guys have had the big group and the small group and, and so on is an opportunity for people to discover for themselves what all this wisdom that that is just ingrained and hidden in humanity. Yeah, thank you, because that is the intention that people find it within themselves, not just have information handed. Thank you. Is that complete? It was a good example of um, reflective listening, which over and over I forget to do, but <laughs> thank you for setting the example. You're welcome. Thank, <laughs> thank you for highlighting it. <laughs> And Tanya? Um, I want to share something that happened uh, that I was present for. Uh, 
right after the shooting at the Buffalo uh, supermarket, I was in a workshop with um, a number of people that was around racism. And the leader said the first thought that she had when she heard about this was, that's my boy. And it touches me so deeply to know, and, and of course, that's not where my mind was. My mind was, you know, that's some other, that's not me, I'm not like that, I'm not like that person. I disowned that person and criticized them in my own mind, you know, I was horrified by them. And here's someone says, that's my boy. And I realized that, that that's one of the things that as, as white people, and until we form community, until we form real community, and until we embrace and accept each other, not what each other does, but that we're all human beings, and, and realizing that here's someone who no one, no one called in, and they ended up doing something really terrible, that they'd been deserted and isolated and, and left alone to go their own way, and that's where they went. Um, it, it just touches me. It's so much to, to, and this is along the lines of, you know, leaving a, a lay in a basket at someone's house, inviting people back into the community. That's restorative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you. Rina? Yeah, Tanya, your sharing brings in me this feeling that I had a few days back on 4th of July when I, you know, that a part of my heart dies each time somebody shot and somebody shoots. And thank God our hearts are regenerative. You know, we can grow those parts again. So I'm, 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 I'm just honoring our human spirit and our collective humanity mm -hmm. in this moment. Thank you mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, you're not alone in your grief and nor am I. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and yeah, I know at the moment <laughs> to pause, I also want to share this exciting experience of like, Alison, when you shared with that description of how a person can feel in a new neighborhood. I could resonate with, I was like, how do you know how I felt? And I also could touch upon the fact that a part of that person who played the music would be telling them that, hey, this is loud. You may be disturbing people. And I'm like in that moment of overwhelm and, you know, I'm like, it's okay it's just today or doesn't matter, you know? So how I, there are parts in us that guide us and sometimes we choose to overlook them. So I'm not stupid, you know? And in that, I could, I could in that moment, I could honor that I made a, yeah, I, I, I made a mistake, but I am not a mistake, you know? I'm not stupid. Mm -hmm. So I think the lay, the food, brings back that dignity to me. So it's more than just food or it's not just food, of course, food is everything, but there's such depth of layers in our experience of ourselves and we can, yeah, we can show up. And, and, and for me in my neighborhood, it was the other way around. On, on the left side, there was somebody playing loud in Hindi Bollywood music. And I was like, oh my God, is this gonna happen every day? And then I remember this uh, lady sharing about her love for one actor when she was young and I could relate to that joy that she might be feeling listening to that old song. And I could tune into that. And on the right side, there was this family who played Himachali folk music. And I suddenly perked up that, wow, I am in this new environment, you know, where there's this kind of folk music, which is different. So. I could I could really hold the diversity more vividly 
and also hold myself that, my God, if this happens every day, then I'll need to do something about it. And it didn't. It doesn't happen every day. So, so it's like, hold your horses, <laughs> be in the moment, connect, and maybe it's, it's different from what I imagine it to be. You know, so mm -hmm. I just wanted to bring that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I took a little more time, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And that brings us to Rob. Yeah, I just, uh, through the breakout room, I just kind of relaxed and uh, got in touch with core, uh, you know, needs and things that I want to write down and revisit again and again, uh, uh, security, trust, and belonging. Savoring security, yeah. trust, and belonging. These are a few of our favorite things. <laughs> we have time for a couple of more, especially I'd, I'd love to hear if this was your first time here. Joseph, if you wanted to check in again with how the class was for you, or if there's anybody who hasn't spoken yet that feels the desire to just have your voice put into the circle, want to make room for you as well. So please consider that to support a need for connection and being with one another. Joseph? Since I started the second, second term uh, compassion course, I feel uh, I'm opening up suddenly. I'm uh, glad I'm getting new connections. And uh, I used to hide from people because I was ashamed doing my mistakes while talking. Is my English is good? Is my grammar good? Or whatever. But now more of the connections I am making, it's a joy. I used to hide away from connections. I was happy doing meditation without connecting with the people. But uh, without connection, nothing can happen. So when I went to the IIT, they put a matrix, connection before correction. So I'm trying to connect as many dots as possible now. Thank you. Thanks, Joseph. Thank you. Uh, familiar phrase. And Aviva? Hi, good evening. Um, so could you get a little closer to your mic and we'll hear you a little easier? Can you hear me now? Softly, but he, right, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you, go ahead. Okay, I'll turn the fan down. Um, Mina and I had a conversation and we had a new person who wanted to listen. So, um, um, first timer, so that's, that's great. So I just wanted to throw out in the group that um, th th it's always so rich, the class. And then I always find a couple of things that are missing that I wish were part of the dialogue. And today that was um, number one, that we don't need to be empathic to every thing that comes up. And wh what I'm trying to learn is to be empathic to myself and be clear about the choices of where I want my energy to go. Um, because sometimes I find that I give away my energy to things that are not really priorities. And I, that's not the best use of, of how I could be in the world. Um, and the, the other thing is that, um, and I thank Mina for this in the group that um, often there's an internal conflict about which I don't even realize it's happening, which is where should I put my energy in this moment? And what ends up happening for me is I focus on the transaction of needing to tell the other person, you know, no, I'm not available for this, or, oh, I need to hang up the phone now, or you text them, I can't do that now. Um, or it's a family member that often pulls, you know. But, but then I realized, well, what's missing is also the conversation with self. 
of, oh, I'm making this choice. I'm free to make this choice. It is okay that I'm making this choice about where my energy goes. I don't need to feel guilty about it. I don't need to feel so pulled all the time. Um, that there, the freedom is in not only trying to make a choice, but being okay with it. And then the last thing I wanted to throw in here tonight is that, um, and it kind of makes my heart cry. Um, most of the time, the some of the conflicts going on right now, they're not as benign as somebody has their music on loud. Um, and for me, you know, and for many people struggling with gun violence, struggling with violence to women's bodies and this whole, you know, ban on abortion and all that. Um, I think the brain goes often to the fight or flight, which is not really a freedom. And um, I feel like it's like this huge responsibility and burden almost for us to do the work so that we don't get caught in the fight or flight and for us to be able to be in a place of freedom. Um, and so I just um, thank you for letting me add these thoughts to the conversation tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really appreciate your acknowledging that we, what I hear is that we don't always have choice about the conditions around us. And we do have choice about how we take care of ourselves and integrate ourselves, integrate um, and care for ourselves and ideally make some choices that'll meet more needs at less cost. So thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a great summary of Eva that um, to acknowledge that everything we're talking about here is, is choiceful. I would never want anybody to walk away with the idea that empathy was a have to. Marshall called that empathy from hell. And so that only only give empathy, offer empathy when you can can do it uh, when it's fun, as Marshall would say, you do it with the joy of a child feeding a hungry duck, then we experience this sense of freedom. So that that's the world that I want to live in that we all just um, acknowledge our choicefulness, our freedom from moment to moment, and that we live and acknowledge also that we live in this world of interdependence that these two needs, they're not in conflict, that these two needs actually are um, uh, two sides of the same coin. There's only one coin that we're spending uh, over and over again in every moment. Let me finish with this quote from Marshall, that our sur survival as a species depends on our ability to recognize that our well-being and the well-being of others are in fact one in the same. So that's what we'll continue to, to work on over the next few weeks. Uh, we will come back next week with, um, with really looking at uh, intentionality. Uh, we, we nickname it the zero step. And we will um, uh, dive into that. Marshall called it spiritual clarity. So we will work deeply on cultivating the answer to the question, why would we ever want to do nonviolent communication? There's a lot of other things that we could be doing in our life. We could be playing loud music or golf or sleeping or, but you decide to come here for some reason. Why? Why do you use nonviolent communication in your life? So we'll explore uh, the depth uh, of that, hopefully in that self-discovery mode that uh, uh, Siva was talking about. Um, in the meantime, uh, we do record all the classes and they are uh, available on the website. Um, soon after uh, the class um, uh, finishes, and I will put the link in, uh, in just a second. Uh, and we also do all of our classes by a donation. But first, uh, the link uh, for how to get to the recordings is on our website, pathways to liberation.com. <clears throat> I'll put it into the chat. That's where you'll get the recordings. 
There are probably uh, 75 recordings there now. So if, um, if you end up on quarantine for whatever reason, then um, you got plenty to do to listen to these recordings. Plus there's lots of other NBC trainers that you could um, uh, enjoy in the, on the internet. Uh, I wrote a book called um, Pathways to Nonviolent Communication. And it's a fundraiser for the Center for Nonviolent Communication. There's a link for how you can probably get it um, shipped to you for free. It's on at any bookstore. You could probably get it or order it. Uh, I encourage you to use your local mom and pop bookstore. <clears throat> they need the, the business. And um, also um, to make a donation to the Center for Nonviolent Communication directly, you can follow this link here. And CNBC is the organization that Marshall Rosenberg started to support his work. If you don't want to give to them and you want to uh, support our work, you can use our PayPal address, which you can find there at that website. And then I think um, um, somebody else wanted to share something about another upcoming class. Corey? Corey, are you there? Yeah, I have to unmute. Yeah, I'll put the information in the chat. Um, I studied with John Kenyon, who's mm -hmm. a contemporary of Jim and Jory, and also trained with Marshall for many years. And he has a really interesting course coming up in September that I've never seen anything quite like it, where he teaches a, a 10 to 12, what he calls conversation maps, they're like roadmaps mm -hmm. to get through a variety of different uh, conversations, uh, disagreements and conflicts and um, including inner conflict. And I just absolutely love the course. And I think it would be wonderful for certification candidates and really anybody that's interested in going deeply into this. So I'll please sit in the chat. Is that okay to do that? Please do. Sure. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. And, and I see Nikhil and Nanda has his hand up too. Okay. Yeah, just uh, I thought about it a couple of times when you were talking about Jim, the story. And a few other people I know in the area have been posting on next door. Uh, so, and they're maybe a mile away from uh, each other from where our mutual friend is that I know who you're talking about. And it occurred to me also, like I have a neighbor that plays music sometimes loud or the radio. And you know, where we live sound travels so much so that the people might not be in a way having a little empathy for them. They may not realize how loud their music is. It might be, you know, cause they might live in Kahului or New York and for them, they just, that's the normal sound of music. I'm not defending it. It's just, it occurred to me trying to have empathy is that, oh yeah, they may not be aware, but it's ironic that you brought this story up because I just went on next door and a few people, fortunately I'm a, I must be far enough away that I don't hear it, uh, but um, uh, anyway, I just wanted to share that as a, a perspective also that uh, they might be oblivious to it, uh, you know, for them, or they might not be, uh, you know, their hearing might be uh, a challenge. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. But thank you for letting me share that. Thanks, Nikki Lananda. Thanks for the compassion. Um, Jim, I can't post. Is there something wrong with my computer? I've got it for everyone and I'm clicking and I've posted before. It's so weird. Huh. And it, I get this little... So you can definitely see it says everyone just before you post yeah. you click on type and it doesn't go huh i'll see so if I can yeah it. i'll see if i, I can just find it i posted it to you already jim could you oh. repost that uh okay uh let's see here oh there it is it just came in from mina yay oh my God. <laughs> maybe mina's got she's got she was also in the course yeah Oh, oh well, no, it does. It just says it's really okay. no. She's just recommending it. Okay. It yeah. have the okay, I'm working on it here. I'm working on it. Oh wait, I think I just. Ah, oh, there we go. Now we do. Yeah, it just uh, came through from you, Corey. Oh, it's it's a long text. Maybe that's why it took a while. Oh, oh, I have to do it. Two okay, parts. I don't know. Okay. But, but, just go to the blue. The blue link people and you're welcome to uh email me for information great there I, you I, go. Yep. it's got it right it's got a whole couple paragraphs there now 
Perfect. Thank you, Corey. And I hope you guys uh, consider joining John. He's he's one of my favorite trainers. I've learned a lot from oh, John yeah. over the years. And now we have what we call the after party. You're welcome to hang out uh, and uh, stay and have a cup of tea with some friends. Jory will make uh, small groups for those who stay. We've had people stay for five minutes uh, fif or 50 minutes, whatever you want to do, hours even. So if yeah. you want to stay, hang out, and you're welcome to do that. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Yeah, aloha. Thank yeah, you. And I leave you. And I leave you in your small groups if the, everybody else is still there. And if you find yourself alone, just give me a couple minutes. So I'll be moving you around so that nobody is alone in a room. Aloha, everybody.